Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Guest in a mastermind, and she's become a great friend and accountability buddy. Meet Emily Palin. She designs and codes modern, stylish websites for entrepreneurs and small businesses in a creative and online digital space. She found her calling in web design after taking a coding course and fell in love with this combination of art, science, and business. Trading in her previous life in corporate business four years ago for the promise of nothing but adventure and youthful freedom, she traveled extensively through Europe, living the digital nomad life as a freelance photographer, travel blogger, and kayak guide in the Norwegian fjords. Emily recently moved to Seville, Spain with her partner. When she's not dreaming of new business ideas and website designs, you'll find her traveling wide-eyed with a camera in hand, eating tapas and learning new languages. In today's episode, Emily shares how she tried to fit into the mold of who she was supposed to be, how she left a high-paying job in pursuit of something more aligned while facing the disappointment of her loved ones, how she had nothing yet felt enriched, how traveling helped her get in touch with different sides of herself, how she grew into her voice, how she went from being a perfectionist to learning to let go and trust, how journaling helps her connect to her heart, and so much more. This episode is packed with wisdom. Emily is wise beyond her years, and I'm so excited to dive in with you. Uh, Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. (laughs) (laughs) How are you feeling? Feeling very well rested today. Yes. Oh, that's good. I don't hear that enough from people, I think. (laughs) Yeah. It it was a, yesterday was, I worked till 1am, just tying some things up um, for a client project of mine, but I have made a really strict rule that I don't work in the weekends and I try really hard to stick to that rule and yeah yeah so I just do whatever I can to finish it by Friday and then the weekends Uh are always very for for my own time for creative freedom yeah yeah do you plan anything around it or you have some highlights you want to do or you just kind of flow yeah for the weekend for the weekends um I always carve out some time for myself um at a cafe to read, to journal, to write. And like I said, I said at least two hours on a Saturday morning. And then if I can on a Sunday as well, do that. Some bike rides, like get out and about the city. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're in Sevilla right now. Yes. Yes. I'm Sevilla, in Spain. Oh. <laughs> so okay. Let's start from the beginning until we hop to how you got to Spain. Tell me a little yeah. bit about the yourself. Story. <laughs> I love it. That's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So how, how far back did you want to go? How far back? Where are you from? Um, so I have an interesting uh, start story. Um, I was born in Singapore. Um, the first five years of my life, I think I was... I spent maybe some time in Singapore, some time in Hong Kong, some time in Shanghai, some time in Canada. And what? then- What? You were in you? Canada as well? <laughs> For how long? It was my cousins lived there. So my, my dad's brother, they live, in, um, they live in Canada. And yeah, so, so we were there visiting and um, it was actually my cousin who gave me my name, Emily. Uh, the English name Emily. So I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> thank <Wow>. you, cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it was a pretty crazy first five years of my life. And um, the the most memorable part of that was when my dad, he was working in Germany. And I just remember living 
in Europe for a little part of that that point I, I don't know if it was six months but yeah I remember like being in France being in Germany just yeah and it was winter and it was just beautiful mm-hmm. and it had such a profound impact on me uh somehow I don't know I always felt a yearning to go back there even though that was the one and only time until I was 21 <laughs> that yeah. I was actually in Europe but um yeah I always felt the yearning to go back and so were, were those your first memories? A lot of traveling and just being in different of places? Traveling. Yeah, I think I got a passport when I was like a few months old. I was I was on a plane like <laughs> within a few months, I think. <laughs> You're like, I'm ready to travel the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My dad was a my dad is a very like he loves traveling. He traveled a lot. My parents both traveled a lot. And so I was really lucky to have had that in the first five years of my life and then when we got to New Zealand it just it was so far away from everything we were starting a new life and it was like hard um and so we didn't travel very much after that I remember just it was maybe three years sometimes five years before we went back to see family oh and really yeah it was a lot more frequent at the start but then it kind of just staggered out and dragged out longer um so yeah yeah I don't know I missed that I mean New Zealand's beautiful I am so fortunate and grateful to have grown up in New Zealand Um, yeah so that's where you settled and yes how many years of your life did you spend there um so from the age of five until very recently so I, I grew up there high school university and then during university, I did two exchange semesters. The first one was to Vienna, second one to Stockholm. And I just fell in love with Europe. I was like, I feel at home here and yeah. I want to stay here. So, yeah. And, and, and now I'm here. I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. How did you think, do you think that the experience of traveling a lot helped you how did it shape your experience growing up, I guess? Ooh, so much. I think, like, it's something that I've only, like, kind of reflected upon as I'm, like, older now. But but um, one of the things was definitely not being attached to mm-hmm. things and to places. Um, yeah, just... And, and also just realising that there are so many different ways of living right like yeah I think that was really profound for me um just accepting that people do things differently um and and just experiencing so much diversity as a Mm -hmm. child I I really enjoy that and even now like I feel most at home when I'm in a group with like expats like just people from everywhere you know or people who've traveled I it, they just bring something different. Um, people who feel at home in the world. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that. Um, trying to think. It definitely grew my appreciation for people's differences rather than, rather than like that feeling of, oh, you're different. You're not part of us you know um yeah 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 so appreciating the differences yeah yes definitely I think traveling when you open yourself up to these possibilities and opportunities you get to also open your perspective that's beautiful yes yes Yes. so I want to dive in a little bit more into what you do (laughs) now but to backtrack that journey you grew up in New Zealand and how was that from going to traveling exploring to just being more static in a place how was that experience growing up oh it was for me it was boring (laughs) because I was I grew up uh the first five years of my life it was very much like city to city so I was very like oh like big city sort of vibe and yeah. we ended up in New Zealand <laughs> and it's it's full of beautiful nature there's so much to do right but in terms of cities it's not really like 
you know, where you'd go for a city. <laughs> so <laughs> it took me a while to kind of adjust to that. It took me a while to adjust to the culture. Um, yeah, and it was it was hard to be different. It right. was, yeah, yeah. I think for me, like having had no English, like going over, I had to learn it from scratch. Um, and it was, yeah, I just remember I struggled a lot. And then towards like the end of high school, it was always, uh, how would you say, maybe it was my own perception that I was different and that I thought that other people thought I was different, that, that I felt excluded. I'm not sure, but I definitely felt like I was more of a burden or an inconvenience to people. And I spent most of my high school years just kind of like, I'm not here guys. Uh, you just do your thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. and and just kind of silently like studying hard um you know thinking that that was where my worth comes from <laughs> was studying hard right. um yeah so yeah I, I, I think also like my family they have very well, they grew up with very traditional like ideas of what a good girl is <laughs> and right. definitely like the belief system that I grew up with was like you know good grades and you know if you basically getting good grades and, and being a good girl and being obedient and, mm-hmm. and and not having too many opinions oh my gosh I was always so by by nature I'm very like quite opinionated like in person you could say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was always told that that wasn't a good thing it's not a ladylike thing to oh. to do um and I was like oh okay so I kind of just learned to be quiet and think that everything I had to say wasn't really like worth while saying <laughs> yeah. and yeah and so I mean that took a lot of work to unravel that um, right, right I think yeah. we talked about it a little bit when we connected we have similar experiences of just trying to fit in the box that were presented to us because that's what they knew and yeah. Yeah, I was also told that I was ladylike I had a I don't know it was such a weird Chinese expression I don't know if you heard about yeah. it it's like do you have the head of a man which made no sense because I was oh. always moving around <laughs> I was very hyper I love climbing oh. things and they're like you look like a like a girl like you look like a sophisticated girl but once you start moving you are nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like I don't understand like what does a girl do that I, I, I didn't understand that concept <laughs> yeah, like a tomboy tomboy yeah Basically, exactly like a tomboy. Uh that's so yeah. interesting yeah yeah I would say I, I feel at heart more of a tomboy um, <laughs> I do like I love my feminine side as well I love that but yeah I totally get what you mean and on that note it's like it was the the fear of not it was more like I had a fear that if I didn't do well that if I didn't listen I wouldn't have friends I wouldn't have people who loved me and I just wanted to be liked and I wanted to be loved in a foreign country who I didn't really I was still learning their customs and I was like I was trying so hard to just like fit in and to be liked um and I really hated being different um, mm-hmm. really, really hated being different. I was like, why can't I just like be a normal Pakeha person? Pakeha is the Maori word for like British people, white people. Um, so why can't I just be a normal Pakeha person with like Pakeha parents and, and um, just be normal? And it took me such a long time to get to a point now where I'm like, oh, I am different. I love it. I'm unique. I stand out this way. And just really like embracing that and not apologize for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's quite a journey, right? I think as we grow up and we seek to identify who we are or seek to find mm-hmm. ourselves or at least 
you know, discover ourselves, we adopt different personas or different tactics to be safe because I know I have a very similar experience. We traveled a lot growing up just because Mm -hmm. we moved a lot and I never really made friends long enough to stay connected with them. And then when I, we, I was born in Peru and then because of terrorism, we moved to Canada for a bit and then I moved back to Peru. So I had to learn Spanish looking Chinese who only spoke in English. So I was already different and I also had the same like I have moments where I felt I don't know if I want to be Chinese you know they make fun of me and and it's and it it brings me so much shame now that I'm older but back then because I didn't fit in yes and I saw how they made fun of Chinese people so I'm like I don't want to be and then magazine covers everything is you know fair skin we had western influence like from North America so nothing we didn't see us Mm -mm. and now that I'm older and I see why representation matters Mm. I'm like yeah I think it matters (laughs) back then I'm like I don't care who is there I I think I admire the person for the person but Mm. yeah being able to relate Mm. oh my gosh yes that I can really really resonate with that yeah yeah and yeah it's it's sad and then You know, I remember, (laughs) I remember, I don't know if you ever had to go to Chinese school, but my mom, you know, used to, every Sunday I'd go to Chinese school and I was like, why? Like, I don't want to, I want to like hang out with my friends. (laughs) And now I'm actually regretting like, oh, I should have like put in a bit more effort, you know, so that I could actually (laughs) say a bit more, (laughs) read a bit more. (laughs) Okay. But I want to bring to the point that how many languages do you speak? I speak... So within Chinese, I speak Mandarin, Cantonese, and Shanghainese. um, Which Which are very different, by the way. All three of them are really different. (laughs) (laughs) They were, funnily enough, they were actually my first languages. I don't even know which one came first. They just all kind of came (laughs) to me. And then English was fourth, but that's my most, I would say that's my native language. Like I can, am most comfortable with English. And then learned German thanks to my partner who (laughs) told me everything I have to know (laughs) um yeah so German I learned a bit of Italian when I was living in Italy um for some time and now I'm learning Spanish which is so much fun (laughs) yeah see you know so many languages (laughs) oh so do you you speak Spanish we should have a conversation in Spanish sometime actually we should try we should try that maybe towards the end we can end it in Spanish (laughs) yeah mine is rusty I think I sound like a child (laughs) my slang is from 2006 when I go back to visit my friends yeah what are you saying we haven't said that since like 10 15 years ago I'm like well that's when I left (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I think my, my Chinese is pretty outdated, I'll be honest. <laughs> mm. I know, I sound like a five-year-old. I think actually five years old are more eloquent than I am <laughs> because they've only <laughs> taught us like the basic <laughs> words. So that's why I feel like I'm master of none wherever I go. <laughs> I just kind of like stand out and learn to embrace yeah. it. Yeah, but something I've loved about it was so interesting learning German as an adult. So I learned it when I was 21 and like to see a language go from gibberish, like it made no sense to me to like me fully being able to understand and have a conversation like that. I, like, I still can't believe that happened in the space of like a few years, you know, and something that I've loved about learning a language as an adult now is realizing how much of the culture is embedded in the language like just the way people say things the word itself and then and then just seeing the 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 culture as a whole like you know realizing like oh they are the way they are because their language is is like this that is so fascinating yeah i've never i've never made the connection I so think what are what are some German attributes you noticed or you picked up? Um, for example, the, like in English, okay, this is really hilarious. Um, in English, we're like always so passionate. 
passive. We'll be like, oh, if you've got time tomorrow, do you think you could maybe, you know, if you've got time, possibly, um, get this done. <laughs> you know, only if you've got time though, right? And in German, they're like, uh, can you do this tomorrow? And it's not rude. It's just like to the point. They don't fluff around with words. And when I was first learning German, I would add so many like question mark words and they're like, just, just, just say it. No, <laughs> just, just say the thing. And I just thought that was really funny. And yeah, so, so just their way of speaking, it's very direct mm -hmm. and therefore they're direct uh, in people. And, and so a lot of people who are like, oh, Germans are really like, they say to be That's rude what I've heard. Yeah. or straightforward, but they're not actually rude. They're just, they're just saying what they would say in, in German, but in uh. English, but because English has so many fluff words, it's like you're rude if you don't have those fluffy words in there. Oh, that, that is okay. Sense. That makes so much sense because I I also heard and I we were in Germany one of our like Chinese tours with the family. And yeah, like, they're like so straightforward. I remember we we're trying to buy something. We're like, oh, there's some allergies in the family, and they're like, well, this doesn't have any sauce. I'm like, well, but what is the bread made of? It's like, no, there's. I, I think you're fine. We're just like, oh. <laughs> what, what? I don't know if we can eat this. We weren't <laughs> sure, but that I think that was like a cultural difference. So yeah, <laughs> that was fascinating took, to learn. It took me a while actually to to adjust to that and be like, oh, they're not just they're not. It's it's not personal. Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's personal. Not personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now that you've like you're traveling around the world, I know you had to go through a couple of challenges on your own before mm. you came to embrace that part of you like the world yeah. traveler do you want to talk a little bit about it yeah. about your time between high school and your career absolutely so um i think one of the most amazing things travel allowed me to do was to be anybody i wanted to be just mm -hmm. to be in a different country where nobody knew me um i wasn't like restrained by what my friends thought of me, what my colleagues thought of me. I was just like, I could be a fun version of myself. I could be an antisocial version of myself. I could be any version of myself. And when I meet people, you know, I could tell them anything. I could be anyone. And I, that was so liberating for me. And I, because of that, I got in touch with different sides of myself that I didn't even realize existed. You know, mm. like this, fun, courageous, daredevil side of me. I never thought she was there, but, but when I was traveling, I had to do some pretty crazy things. <laughs> you know, like I would go hitchhiking. I like stayed with random people. Um, I, I, not, that, not that I'm like advocating just staying with right. random people, <laughs> right? but like things like couch surfing and just like, yeah, just, just, um, yeah, also trusting in the unfolding of things, like trusting in the unknown. So uh, traveling really brought those together, just like realizing different sides of me. I can be whoever I want to be. And then also, um, also that not knowing how this adventure is going to go and just like just trusting in that's going to be a great adventure as long as I, um, as long as I kind of, don't try to control every single aspect. Like just things always worked out really beautifully. And I always met really yeah. beautiful people. Um, so that was a really important part of my shift, I think. Because mm -hmm. before that, I think I was always quite a perfectionist, a controller. Um, I, I had my life planned out. And when the thing that I'd worked my whole life for, which was... A, being a doctor, and then B, wanting a corporate job, when both of those didn't even end up being what I wanted. Like working your whole life, getting there and realizing like, oh, it's not what I want. And then- How was, yeah. that, how was that journey? Like how was that process of you, like do you want to dive deeper into it? Yeah, like like the realization, oh, how did I- The realization, you said you wanted to be a doctor, like when did yeah. you realize- to be a doctor and when did you realize maybe not? <laughs> I, let me rephrase that and be like I don't think I ever wanted to be a doctor I was told since I was five years old that I was going to be a doctor because 
my family was I came from a family of doctors um so that was just like when you're told basically since you're five years old you just kind of think that's what you're going to do um I did first year kind of pre-med school um and while I kind of found aspects of it interesting it just wasn't my thing I didn't care much for it. I was like, okay, cool. Learn the different arteries in your body. Learn the different buds. I didn't care. I really didn't care. And I, for other people, it's like so interesting, right? Um, yeah, and I just kind of realized like halfway through the year, I was like, no, I kind of don't want to get into med. I don't. Yeah. And so I decided to pivot and do something else, which I've always wanted to do actually, um, was business just commerce um so I enrolled in a commerce degree in accounting and economics hoping to actually get some tips for personal finance but funnily enough you don't learn that (laughs) at university (laughs) so yeah so I did a good four years of that and while I don't think I'll be using my degree like in a corporate job ever hopefully um I am very grateful that it allowed me the two exchange semesters that I had to Vienna and Stockholm. Like they were magical and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. I would definitely, if I, I always joke if I was ever to do a master's again, it was, it would be because I can do another exchange. Oh, it's because <laughs> of the exchange program. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first part. Um, so good. So good. And yeah, so I did two internships in like auditing, uh, another one. I saw half my time in audit, half my time in business advisory. I, I, I was really excited because oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm adulting, you know, I'm, it's like a real job. <laughs> it was so boring. It bored my brains out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what people, like, I, you know, this is what being an adult is about. I know, I was like, this is not being an adult. This is like, this is like prison for me. For me, it was. For other people, yeah. they might like love that, right? But I just couldn't bear it. And and then my second, I thought maybe it was just that firm. Maybe I just yeah. didn't vibe well with it. So I'd give it another shot before I actually like said, no, that's enough. And I got a job as a tax consultant of all things. And yeah, I learned a lot. I'm very grateful for that. I'm always so grateful for the opportunities that come my way. But I was waking up in the mornings and just dreading going to work. And when, so I got offered a full-time position there. And when I signed that, document like for the full-time position starting next year you know what I felt I, I felt like I was signing my death warrant like I, I know that's really extreme but like that's what I felt I was like I just felt so sad for my youth like for everything that I was like losing as I handed that, that paper over and that paperwork came with like a very handsome salary oh and my patient yeah <laughs> so good I was like I need this and my mom was so proud of me both my parents were so proud of me and I was like oh yay like I'm adulting but why am I not happy you know like what I had people were like so many people are looking for jobs and this one just landed like more or less on my lap and I was like I should be so grateful but I'm really sad like really sad and right at that time I remember a good friend of mine um she was doing a second exchange to Germany she was like oh Anne's like why don't you just like (laughs) go on another exchange and I was like oh Freya if only life was so easy (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) and but funnily enough I I it, it's kind of kept at the back of my mind. And I was like, actually, you know what? I'm going to go in and ask them if, if that might be possible. And sure enough, there was a scholarship for like to, uh, was it to, to Scandinavia or to Stockholm specifically? I can't remember, but um, I managed to get myself a scholarship over partial. 
Um, and I took it and then I went back and told them that actually jokes guys I'm going to stop home <laughs> yeah you're like oh, no thank you <laughs> <laughs> but it took me a month to, mu- to muster up the courage to tell people like I and, and it took me even longer to tell my mom I, I, oh the worst was the disappointment um yeah just the disappointment, the the fear of like, did I just give up everything for the promise of nothing? And but but it was so interesting because like while I have this fear in my mind, I'm like, oh my god, like, am I going to be, you know, am I going to regret this? But my body was like, I feel so relieved. I'm like, I feel free. Like I just got the keys to my freedom. Or something. And I was so excited again for life. Like yeah. I was excited for life. Again. You bring up such an important point that sometimes we miss, you know, in your mind, we have those fears and regrets of, you know, giving up the idea of who we could have been, but your body, your body knows, your body always knows. The Absolutely. fact that your body was like, I can breathe again. This was not meant yes. for me. Yes. And it's hard to listen to your body when your mind is like, you know, the expectations and everything that you've mm. worked for. At mm. least for me, when I was deciding to quit my career, the hardest part was, what am I going to tell my parents? And mind yes. you, I was a 27-year-old. I w- I've been supporting myself for years. And yes, they <laughs> helped me along the way. But, you know, I, I could have done anything. But it was pushing back those fears and those expectations of me and say everything I worked hard for wasn't serving me Mm. and it was terrifying at least for me having that conversation was terrifying the disappointment the oh they're probably going to disown me I fought so hard to do this (laughs) and at the end (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah it's so hard and like the noise of of everybody else telling you how you should live your life right and I really had to detach myself from that and just what do I want and it's like that battle between your head and your heart right um the head's always logical but I feel like I feel like if you don't go with what your heart desires you will always feel this kind of emptiness just I don't know I can't explain that but I just you know if you, you can make a logic but uh, the best thing is when your head and your heart are like yeah we we both agree like let's do this right yeah. <laughs> but if you've got that split decision I feel like I feel like uh, yeah your heart gives you something just just going with it, it gives you something different yeah mm. and learning that to comes trust from the inside. That. Because I think that comes from the inside, whereas your head, it's like influenced by like everybody else telling you what, and you're like, oh, to fit in, that's what you should do. Um, yeah. So I feel like the truth comes more from your heart than from your head. Yeah. yeah. How did you make the space to listen to your heart? Ooh. Um, so when was, that was, okay, I'm just thinking back to the timeline when that was. Um two things one was journaling I I kind of got into journaling somewhere around that year and it was really therapeutic for me just being able to have enter into a conversation with my head and my heart kind of just the two sides of me Mm -hmm. and and then writing it out and then seeing what came out of that really so I was like my own therapist basically (laughs) so that journaling helped and then being in nature and just being in nature and like shutting off or just being by myself undistracted from Mm -hmm. all the noise and learning to have conversations with myself that was really profound as someone who never really did that growing up Um, (laughs) and and always relied on other people I always relied on other people like what should I do what do you think I should do and for the first time, I'm, like, asking myself, like, what should I do? 
Was that um, scary? It was scary. Oh my God, fear. Like, so many people tell me they're really afraid to be alone. And I think that's really sad. But I understand it because I was there once upon mm-hmm. a time. Like, oh, what do I do with myself? Like, what do I say? Like, in my head, you're just like, oh, it's so weird. <laughs> you know? And, and then just um, realizing that also you are not your thoughts. And, and just, yeah, just finding solace in your own mind and your own self. That was really profound because... Yeah, and just in so many ways, and when I make decisions, it's not because other people told me to do X, Y, Z, it's because I feel like it's the right decision. I've had that conversation with myself. Yeah. What about you? Do you do, yeah. you do that as well? <laughs> Am I weird? <laughs> no, you're not weird. I, I love because I can see kind of a theme happening where with more traveling that you've been doing now and even – during that kind of transition phase in your life, you started trusting, you started coming back to yourself and trusting and just trusting, not knowing. And I think there's so much, it's so empowering to say, you know what, this is what I feel like doing. Mm -hmm. I have all these fears, all these, (laughs) you know, all these expectations from people around me, but I trust in myself and I'm going to follow. And I, it's so beautiful. And you've done it you've explained it or the way that you convey it has been so Mm -hmm. eloquent and do you have any prompts like journaling prompts how did you get started in journaling oh that's a very good question um I think okay so so I had this interesting conversation with a friend recently who also asked me the same question. It's like, what do you do? Do you write down your goals? You know, like, like how to be more productive. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And because the question he asked me was, how do you do journaling? And I was like, interesting, because I don't do journaling. I feel into it. Like, I don't journal with anything in mind to, to, to do. I just like... Um, I sit down with a pen. I might have like this theme of what I want to say, but I, then I just let the pen fly and I, just things come out without me even having to like prompt it. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's beautiful. Sometimes I'm like, like I read it after I've written and I'm like, Oh, that was really profound. <laughs> but in terms of like things that, that I write about, um, definitely, Mm. something that really helped me was I have good days everyone has good days and bad days so I wrote a letter to myself when I'm having a bad day and when I'm having a really bad day I will go and read that and it is actually really beautiful just be like oh thanks Em so you know like pat on the back thank you for having yeah. me my back um and I write mm, I, I write a lot about feelings. I, I, I think a lot of people, they're like, oh, what do you journal about? Like, I, I don't know what to journal. Like, what did I eat for breakfast today? I was like, no, that's so insignificant. Like, <laughs> unless you loved it and you could be yourself, right? <laughs> like, I don't write the things that I do. I write the yeah. things that I feel, like what happened. Like, um, usually someone profound who's entered my life who inspires me and I'll write about them like how they inspired me when I'm traveling it's like how connected I feel to the world to to people Mm -hmm. um just kind of like philosophical realizations for myself I'm like I'll note this down um yeah yeah. yeah. that's beautiful it helps you in a way process and expand on things you know the good feelings it also mm-hmm. makes space for the bad I like how you just yeah. let the pen flow because you're not forcing it you're not forcing an outcome you're not like okay I am trying to figure out my life so I'm in a journal to do it and I think when we mm-hmm. add those expectations that's when it's hard but I often get questions from people who are not used to that I guess self chatter if that's an expression yeah, so they yeah. don't know what to journal so prompts can help when <clears throat> I started like I started journaling when I was maybe three or four or then I don't think I started writing that I don't know four or five just because we moved around so much and I had to learn English 
And my mom was like, journal. So I started writing, today I had a banana bread. I loved it. And then I would see my journals that were like, yesterday my mom didn't let me go to my cousins and I was very sad. And then I saw how it progressed and it started getting more profound from writing about my day, which I guess as a kid helped me practice my language skills to writing how I felt about things. So Mm -hmm. I think the practice comes easier the more you do it and not force it. It does. I'm so glad you brought that up as well, actually, because um, I didn't just start journaling like the way I do now. It started off like about my day as well and how this happened. I don't know. Like it was, I I actually started it when um, me and my first boyfriend broke up and I felt so lost and I just turned to my journaling for, for kind of solace and yeah, it wasn't anything very interesting. When I started traveling, it was also like, oh, I went to this place today and I did that. But slowly as I traveled more and I journaled more, it became more like, it became deeper. So it is a practice. You don't just start journaling and you're like, oh, in touch with the innermost part of yourself. No, yeah. you got to like work your way all <laughs> yeah. the way down there. Yeah, so I'm so true. glad you got that out. So <laughs> true. true. Yeah. So in the process, what as you got, more in tune with what you wanted you did you go to Stockholm was it Stockholm for your masters and what did you do from there I think we're all curious about what did you do afterwards (laughs) so when I decided to do the exchange semester I also knew I couldn't afford it straight away so I deferred for half a year went to Germany got a job at a cafe and decided to learn German. Wait, why <laughs> Germany? <laughs> oh, yeah, because at that point, um, my, my boyfriend, Nico, and I were, we'd been together for maybe a year by then, that point. And um, I was like, yeah, let's like go to Europe. I knew I wanted to be in Europe anyway. So, mm-hmm. oh, no, wait, I wanted to go to Spain. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I went to Spain first, uh, to Girona, which is a beautiful city next to Barcelona. And I was an au pair for three months. Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> for a Catalan family. Uh, that was really, really beautiful time. I enjoyed that so much. And then after that, I um, yeah decided to go back to Germany and get a visa, work at a, work at a cafe, learn German. And then about half a year later, I went to Stockholm. Mm-hmm. I also, I don't know if I've told you this, but because I was really like financially struggling at that point because Europe's expensive and Stockholm is like super <laughs> expensive. And I knew I couldn't afford rent, not straight away at least. And so I bought a car for a thousand euros and I drove up and my thinking was like, oh, I'll just like live in my car for three weeks until I find an affordable place to mm-hmm. move into. Funnily enough, I loved living in my car. I, I, I know this sounds really crazy, but I loved it. I loved being, um, not having Wi-Fi. And there are so many islands in Stockholm mm-hmm. and Archipelago. So I parked my car next to the 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 sea you could call it um oh. on some strange island and just every day drive to the closest metro station and take the train to university and then go back out and i lived with nothing i had basically nothing but i had never been more happy in my life and that was so profound for me because i was like i don't need stuff to be happy and that has changed like everything for me that semester just the hardship of living in a car but still being super happy um yeah so that was that was really beautiful I'm really glad that happened actually and then towards the end when it got really cold and the car froze over at night I was like yeah I should probably find some couch surfers (laughs) (laughs) so I started couch surfing for the last two months of my stay um, and I met some lifelong friends through couch surfing. So That's I'm beautiful. just so glad. Like I went there by myself, lived in the car, and yet, I, yeah, I just I'm I felt so enriched. Um, yeah, because you were 
is it a possibility that you know after going through such a huge transition shift giving up something that you thought you you wanted or you should have wanted and then just kind of breaking the chains and say i'm going to do what makes sense for me and you were so happy in that mm. even though you didn't have a lot cuz I know some people might focus on, oh my gosh, I have no money, I'm in a car. Mm -hmm. But you were focusing on like, I'm free, I get to do this. Oh my gosh, this is fun. That's such a beautiful perspective. Yeah, I like, I get to live, because I would spend two nights in one spot, two nights in another spot. So for me, like in the end, I saw more of Stockholm than any of my friends living in a beautiful apartment. Like we all have different values and what we prefer, but like that was my... Like that was where I sought value and was like, was nature seeing, seeing the landscape and yeah. yeah. Was it ever scary? <clears throat> um, no, it was really beautiful. I would see foxes. I would <gasps> see deer outside. Just like, I'd just wake up and there'd be like something, you know, going by yeah. beavers and one time a moose, like, a massive gigantic moose. I was like, oh my lord. Oh. Um, <laughs> so it was not scary ever. Um, and because freedom camping is allowed in Scandinavia, I oh. thought it was, it was fine. And yeah, I suppose I'm really ballsy in, in that sense that I just don't, I feel like I could look after myself if something was to yeah. happen. And I also trust that. I'm going to be okay. Is that trust? I just I really trust that. Yeah. 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 That's so beautiful. So after your stay at Stockholm, what did you do? Mm. Oh, I went back to Germany. I needed some money. <laughs> so I went back to work at the cafe. Mm-hmm. And then I grew a little bit tired of, of the city that I was in. And I, it was always a dream of mine to um, go to Norway. And a friend from the exchange semester, she was a hiking guide in Norway. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, I'll start applying for hike, like outdoor jobs. And um, somehow got a job as a kayaking hiking guide in Norway. Oh, it's such like a beautiful months. place to do all uh, of that. Oh, uh, it was the most... One of the most magical, magical six months of my entire life. And the people I met, like the fellow guides, they taught me so much. They were so strong. I I really admired their courage. Um, And also for me, so as someone who was always previously quite timid to speak out, like my max capacity was like a group of five people maybe. (laughs) And suddenly I had to give like safety talks and like be the entertainer for a group of like 20, 30 people. And I was really nervous at the start, but it got easier. And the more I did it, the more like, oh, I really like this. So that really allowed me to grow more into myself and like into my voice. And and just Mm -hmm. there is like, people do enjoy listening to me like talk fun facts and, and things like that, you know? It's, yeah. So that was really profound in that sense as well. It allowed me to speak up a bit more. Um, that was six months. What happened after Norway? Oh, and then, so coming from a high, I had a really one of the lowest lows of my entire life was not knowing what I wanted to do after that. I finished my degree, more or less. I was having fun. Can I keep having fun? Is that sustainable? I feel like I should do something with my life. People are telling me to get a professional job. I am struggling financially. I want to keep having fun. But I should do something, you know? And I just felt so useless, like starting to regret my decision, even though I didn't. Um, so I, I lived with my mom in Wisconsin for a while and I felt, oh, that was like really, really dark. I, I really like struggled to get through that time. Um, yeah, that lasted for a, quite a wee while, but the beautiful thing is like, I knew it would pass. Like I just, I feel like I've been there enough times to know that it will always pass whether good or bad. Um, 
and yeah and I think it just needed something to like a purpose a drive again and I and I really found that in photography first off in like writing was really therapeutic for me my travel blog and now web design like I feel this beautiful sense of purpose and fulfillment in what I do yeah. Oh, I remember there was a quote that I saw on your website. I would love to bring that out. Oh, yes. It was yes. Uh, yes. like, first of all, you write beautifully. I get lost in your words, like, in a, oh, thank I'm you. taking on to your story. Um, and it was so profound. So here it goes. After all these years of traveling and discovering myself, I realized that my passion lies in the freedom to create, whether it be photography, writing, or another creative outlet. But passion, I realize, is often for yourself, while purpose usually involves doing things for others. So when passion and purpose overlap, that's when you feel a sense of fulfillment. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> is this how your blog Freedom Wanderers, Wanderers came to be? Um, yeah, I definitely. I felt like I was traveling so much. I had, I loved photography and I wanted somewhere to share that with people like outside of Instagram Um, and yeah and I just thought I'd start blogging Um, and I really loved it I wrote a few like bits of um, prose you could say just little bits and pieces here and there and then got more into writing like destination uh, things like what to do what to see but to be tr- honest with you, I love writing just about deeper things, just what I see, what I feel. Like, you know, when I was in Thailand, a lot of women couldn't enter certain temples. They couldn't touch certain things. And mm-hmm. and I just thought I had to question that. And I wrote something about it, you know. And then um, I would write things about friendships. Um, I just really enjoy writing my heart. <laughs> it's really beautiful and I didn't enjoy writing so much the the travel destinations even though I don't know it just I enjoyed it but I also didn't enjoy it I felt like there was something more I could offer and I didn't know what that was um yeah and then over time I kind of just I, I have friends who are travel bloggers and they do it for a living they earn they make handsome money off it and they do it full time And just seeing, you know, when they travel, they aren't, they they might be enjoying it, but they're working, right? right? And and so instead of like, when you see a beautiful sunset on the mountain, instead of like being present, it's your job to capture that to the best of your abilities and then write about it and then locate, where is it? So you can tell people how you got there. I was like, I just want to like wander. I, I don't right. want to have fixed points where I go to and then tell people about it later. I like, I can tell people when I want to, but I just want to wander. That's why yeah. I love to travel. It's the freedom, not yes. the confinement of being on assignment. So having known that, I think I started pivoting away from the idea of travel blogging. And it happened to be that I did a coding course and I really liked it. I liked yeah. it so much. I followed it through and decided to design some websites for some family friends. And I just followed my curiosity. I let myself follow that curiosity. And I am so glad I gave myself that opportunity to follow that. Yeah. Now so I now you're, you're the proud <laughs> owner. Yeah. So that's what you do full time. You're the proud owner of Aroha Visuals. Am I pronouncing Aroha properly? Yeah. 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 Ar- Aroha Visuals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, Aroha. No, I did not pronounce it properly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah I, it's a Maori word, um, and I really, I really love it because um, it means love in the Maori language, and it's a bit of home with me and it essentially means like love visuals and I love all visual things I'm a visual learner and I was like oh this name is so fitting um Mm -hmm. yeah so it's how the name came to be what do you do what What do I do so I yes (laughs) so (laughs) I am 
so I design Squarespace websites for small businesses. Um, I love working with creatives, so people in the wellness industry as well, um, authors, photographers, so, but anyone. Um, I love I love the combination of say the art, so in the design itself, the art, um, and the science of say coding the science of like technology and also the business aspect of like you can't just have a beautiful website that works like it has to fit into your business strategy somehow so I really love the combination of all three it just yeah. is makes my heart happy this is what I love to do yeah. yeah it's like a combination of all the things you were exploring coming together in like a syn synergy into yes. what you wanted which you yeah. probably wouldn't have known at the beginning but you had to go through this I think yeah yeah oh my gosh and it was so hard at the start to that's just the imposter syndrome like like oh my gosh like I just who am I to who didn't even does who I didn't even study this really I kind of just studied myself um got to a point where you know I could do it professionally um and just feeling like an imposter for most of the year <laughs> <laughs> and almost shying away from clients and and I don't I don't know if a lot of people like believe in energy but I really believe in energy like what like your energy gets kind of can attract or repel clients literally and I didn't realize my energy was really repelling that and like I was like being like guys I'm open for business but like actually I don't want to oh yes I <laughs> you know <laughs> I'd rather <Yeah>. not <laughs> like, and like also who's going to pay yeah. me that much that was a massive question I had a few f close people who were like oh who's gonna pay you that much for a website Ooh. and I was like oh I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they're not familiar with the industry. So, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, I shouldn't have asked them. But, but yeah. you want that comfort and validation. Is there a light? Because I'm starting yeah, to love you in the dark. <laughs> I didn't even realize. It. I didn't want to like interrupt, but let me give me. Yeah, a it's totally fine. <laughs> I don't want to lose you here. <laughs> She's back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> Thank you. I just didn't want you to be talking in the dark after a while. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say something. I was like, well, should I go turn on the light? I was like, should, yeah. should I? Should I? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you mentioned because I was like, yeah, I'm fading in the back. <laughs> yeah. We were in the flow. <laughs> yeah, 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 we were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you brought up how sometimes you ask people for validation because we, I think sometimes our fears of sharing a part of us or something we're excited about can get to us. And we ask people and they, they have good intentions, but they don't understand the value maybe because they're not in the industry. Like right, you said, yeah. so, and then you start doubting yourself. How did you work through that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so when I was starting out, I, most of the people around me, while they love me and support me, they couldn't support me in the way that I needed them to. And, and I couldn't, ex you can't expect that of people, right? And so I realized like I need to look beyond my current circle and find say other web designers or like like-minded entrepreneurs and start finding people who do get me and, and what, you know, being a solopreneur and all. Mm -hmm. so yeah I worked through that by yeah basically connecting with more people um reading some books or like listening to podcasts um and just even surrounding myself if even if it's not like one-to-one -one, but like even just like listening reading uh, people who think the way I want to think people mm -hmm. who like knew their worth um people who are confident and yeah just that really helped 
Yeah. It's good to know, like basking in that energy so that you could get like a little piece Absorbing of it. Absorbing that energy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. That's great advice for anyone who's who might be feeling a little bit lost, but we don't know where, where to turn. Yeah. And it's easy. I've been there. It's easy not to start than to start. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And like my advice would also be like, if you're asking for advice, ask it from people who actually have, uh, say, the expertise or who, who have the say, credentials to actually give you that advice, you know. Um, don't, don't ask your uh, family how much you should charge X, Y, Z if they have no idea and they would, if they're not your target segment as well. You know, you because then they them. project their right. own limitations. Right. Yes. And everyone has money limitations as well. So like, um, and, and if you ask someone, it's like basically you're, they're bringing their baggage, you're bringing their baggage to yours. And, and yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. You, you, if you're going to ask people, ask the people that you're kind of, yeah, you want to work with as well yes yes that, yeah i love that love that advice i need to apply it more too <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your values and how do you embody them Ooh, um i love that we did this exercise recently <laughs> yeah. um, and it's been really profound because i i used to think i have a lot of values but when i had to like dial it down to say even top three, mine were freedom, connection, and creativity. Um, and I would say recently I'm prioritizing connections a lot more. And every week I talked about two to three people, like Zoom calls with two to three people. I just touch in like, you know, friends, um, family, other designers. And it's just been so beautiful to feel more connected. Like I, and cause you know, when you work by yourself to anyone out there who's working for themselves, it's so lonely when you're just by yourself. Um, go out and reach out to people and just have a chat because most likely people are thinking the same like oh my god thank you for reaching out to me really that's, the that's what happened like, with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's beautiful i i think it's so great um so it's been really lovely so this connection um creativity i basically do that for my job i'm so yeah. grateful and freedom i would say I embody that in a lot of different ways. I would say respecting my body and kind of what I feel is right, what I need, I will kind of give it that space to rest or to, you know, if I feel like not working today because I'm really tired, I'm really exhausted, I'll give that myself that freedom. And yeah, I would say when borders are open up again, I'll give myself the freedom to travel. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. now even with your job, you get to travel and yeah, that's, that's how you ended in Sevilla, Spain after yeah. hopping around the globe for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, I'm so grateful to have a job where I can do it from anywhere. Yeah. Um, the only thing Corporate I need to do jobs. No, I know, I know. And actually, it's really interesting. I, I feel like there are certain people who just aren't suited to being employed. Um, and my mom was the first person to say this to me about two years ago. I think she's like, Emily, I just, I think you're, uh, what did she say? Like, you are not meant to be employed. Like, you just, your personality, it's, you're unemployable. And all. <laughs> I don't know what it was so funny. But she meant it in a nice way. And right. She meant it like you should be your own boss, right? That's how I just interpreted it. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> because I'm so headstrong. And when I'm working, even just like at a cafe, I know it's like a really insignificant job in a way. I don't know. But I would always look for things that could be improved. Like, oh, you guys could improve like your timetable scheduling system. And I would like put in the work to maybe get that done. And they just didn't adopt it. I'm someone who always comes up with ideas and like 
Yeah. I want to do some things and experiment. And when I don't have the power to do that, I feel so like insignificant and unpurposeful and just like I'm dying away. <laughs> it's like and, you're being locked up. Yeah. And just like, I want to contribute. Right. And I can't, or people won't let me contribute. And I was like, Oh, that sucks. Like I want to be my own boss. So if I have ideas, I can just um, choose to make them happen or choose not to make them happen. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and that's, freedom in itself for me actually that working for myself is freedom in itself like you know um I know I'm I don't have 20 days of holiday a year I have however many holidays a year I want I just pay myself what I want I have all the freedom and I'm so grateful for that yeah yeah and you get to also make a living by doing what you love and not being attached to anything. And like, I can see you shining and, you know, I know that process of figuring what you wanted to do wasn't like the easiest, but how do you feel now after all of it? Oh, like looking back. So good. And and I feel like uh, even just a couple of months ago, I was still, uh, still in a dilemma. I was like, oh, did I make the right choice? Like was it too ballsy of me to think I could just start up a business by myself and think that it's just going to take off? And, and only recently has it really like really taken off. Like I, I like, I'm being booked out like months in advance and I'm like, well, like I've never earned, honestly, as someone who like worked at cafes and was earning so little a month, the amount I'm earning now, it's like, I can't even comprehend that I get to, make what I make today I like it it's so crazy I would pinch myself and the really beautiful thing is like today I went shopping for a ring so one of my rings broke and um I passed by a local jeweler and his whole family like his, his dad makes jewelry his wife helps him make jewelry and they all had stories and it was so beautiful and I just loved being able to support a local business for someone who loves his craft, you know, and has so much passion for it and be in a position where I can do that. Like, you know, buy beautiful things and kind of keep spreading that, that ripple effect. Yeah. I just, that felt really beautiful for me because I've always felt guilty to spend money on myself because I don't know, I don't have enough money or I should watch where I spend my money. And this year working through so many of my money blocks and money mindsets, I'm in a much more beautiful place with the way I think about money. Yeah. We should do another episode if you're willing. About oh, yeah. money mindset, Cause I've learned so much about it and I, I still have to dive super deep, but yeah. it's the energy because you brought it up earlier, the energy you put out yourself. Yeah. It's the same with money. And it sounds like one of those <laughs> those books is like, attract your money. But I'm like, it, it's true in a way. It is. Like you attract friends, you attract people. Right. Money is also a thing. Right. You know, it is, it is. Um, it sounds crazy, like a super woo-woo like thing that you can just attract money. It's like, oh, good for you, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's where I was. I'm like, okay. <laughs> right, right. And and I definitely we should do another episode on that. But um even just recently, like energetically opening myself up to like bigger clients, I just I'm like, I'm ready for it. I, and I felt energetically ready for it. And they are coming. I just, I'm not joking. It works, man. <laughs> like, it works. Oh, great, Emily, you're available. <laughs> Let me book you. <laughs> yeah. Because because it's one thing to be like, oh, I have a website up and I'm offering the service. And another to like energetically feel like your services are worth that money the, the price that the, you know that you put out there that it's worth it you have to believe that it's worth it for that energy to kind of match because if you're like oh you know my website's worth like 
what, say 3,000, but you're like, oh, but no one's actually going to pay me 3,000. Are you crazy? Are you actually? And then that's, that's just a mismatch of energy and then you're just going to get people who don't think that you're worth that. Yes. Yeah. What you say now comes I back. Agree. It's, Amen, yeah. Emily. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we think alike, that we just vibe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is an advice you have for maybe younger people or anyone really who are at a crossroads and are being pulled between the career and job security versus their soul yearning? Ooh, um, I would say, depending on, okay, um, if you're like young, if you're like in your early 20s, I would say just experience just experiment and experience like whatever you can whatever life throws your way like say yes to like as many things as possible you know even if you don't want to do it forever like i did kayak guiding i didn't think i wanted to do that forever but i still did it and it brought me things that i didn't think that i would actually get from that you know like you learn things about yourself so everything just i think it's so beautiful to be in your early twenties and if you're in your early twenties, um, to, to just go where your heart desires. Just, you want to go live there, go live there. You want to be an orchid, go be an orchid. Like do whatever. And then when you get to 25 roughly, you're like, oh, okay, I'm ready to like build something now, but you have all of this like experience and knowledge to like draw upon. Um, and you've experimented, like experimented with different things. You know what you like, what you don't like, and you can make more like a line decision as opposed to only ever doing one thing and then thinking you want to do something else. And then that is so daunting because you don't know if you even like it or not, but if you can experience and experiment with that, then you kind of know better. And then my second advice would be um, to trust in the unfolding of things it's so hard i struggled this year to trust that my business idea was gonna work out i really i really struggled with that but i kept trusting that it would work out and it just took a lot of patience and a lot of hard work and a lot of trust um and it does work out and sometimes even more beautifully than you anticipated um, yeah. and that, and, and another thing, profound thing that I wrote in my diary just yesterday actually was so many ups and downs, like life is full of ups and downs. Right. Um, and this year I've been through a lot of, um, not exactly pain, but like a lot of like suffering, maybe like self doubt, a lot of like, oh, like, can I really do this? And I feel like you have to go through all of that in order to get to where you even want to be like there's no fast track through you can't just skip the self-doubt and the imposter syndrome just like okay I'm, you know i'm successful now but it's, you know like yeah. it's it's almost like um you have to get through that barrier in order to like hop over to the other side and i feel like i'm slowly hopping over the barriers <laughs> yeah. but yeah it's all part of part of that oh so that was be, so beautiful yeah. emily yeah we can yeah. avoid the lows and like you said it helps you come up and learn more about yourself that was yeah. beautiful i wish i'd had that advice when i was younger oh. <laughs> i'm past my 20s but still yeah. really relevant advice for any so age. People, like in our day and age it's like oh like we're taught that to avoid pain to avoid like negative feelings but you know, more and more I'm learning to embrace the negative emotions and sit with them and be like, they have something to tell me. And yes. like, what is it that they're trying to tell me? And then when I figure that out, I can let it go and like, like level up to the next one. <laughs> you yeah. know, slowly move past them because they don't leave. They're just always there until you work it out I would yes. say I see it as almost like a video game where you know sometimes yeah. you have to fight like the monsters or whatever your final battle and if you yeah. don't do that you never get to the next level 
Mm. You can try to quit, yeah. but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that yeah, was so yeah. beautiful, Emily. Here are some rapid fire questions. They're yes. profound, but I also call them rapid fire. I thought it would be fun. Yeah, What's the true. best compliment you've ever received? Ooh, um, probably from my partner. Uh, we've been through like loads of ups and downs, broken up, long distance, gone back together. And after all of that, he still said to me, like it's it's all been worth it like you're worth it and I was like after all of that (laughs) (laughs) you are (laughs) I know after all of that and I just feel like um to be to be loved for my imperfections as well it's just like my whole self that's so beautiful that's kind of what I took away from that that's the best compliment I've ever gotten thank you thank you for sharing thank you for sharing a book that's changed your life Ooh, loads this year. This year has been crazy. Um, the most recent book, sort of the most recent books will stick with you. Um, it's called Belonging by Toko Pa. And as someone who's had such a disjointed childhood and I've struggled to feel like I belong with anyone or any one place, this book really helped me like heal that sense of not belonging and I feel so much more at peace with the world just that even if it's only for a short time that I belong to a place I still belong to a place or to people um and that that is just so magical in itself it doesn't have to last forever um yeah so definitely that book oh beautiful what does coming home to yourself mean I would say tying that back to recently, like with the negative emotions, it's like embracing all of yourself and not just like when you're feeling down, don't escape from that. But like, that's when you need to love yourself more. Like you need to like really almost talk to yourself, like comfort yourself um, and embrace those negative emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that is you. That is all of you. You are not just your hacky emotions. You are not just your dark negative emotions that like you are both of them. Um, and I think this year embracing my, my the bad traits, the, the traits I don't like so much about myself, <laughs> embracing those more and always using that to my advantage and, and just kind of like, yeah, feeling more into myself and being okay with that. Yeah. I love it. What do you want more of? Adventure. Always. 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 <laughs> always. always. Advice, um, advice for your younger self? Um, ooh, I have thought about um, so many, but it would definitely be... Um, You don't have to have everything figured out. You really don't. And like, it's actually, uh, in my eyes now, a curse to know everything that's going to happen. And that is actually an absolute blessing to just be like, not know what's going to happen. You can make your life whatever you want to make it. You know, you create it. So, yes. Yes. And finally, where can people find you? Ooh, um, if you love travel photos, you can find me at, at Emily Palin, um, E-M-I-L-Y-P-E-I-L-A-N. And if you're into like design, websites, stuff, um, you can find me at, uh, at Aroha Visuals. Um, yeah, I'm pretty active on both of those and I love talking to people. Yeah. Yeah. And her photos are beautiful, just like the website she designed. I love your aesthetic and the simplicity you really bring out the soul and essence of the projects you work on oh, thank yeah. you that, that means so much to have you noticed <laughs> of course what are some programs that you're offering um or your services oh i so i do website like for website designs um i've got some templates coming out next year so that's in the works super excited about that um 
Yeah, so I mean, I suppose in the meantime, if you are thinking if anyone's like needs some advice for websites, like just reach out to me on DM. I'm like always super happy to just like answer people's questions. Yeah. And she's super friendly. She reached out to oh. me. We met at the <laughs> Mastermind. She's like, hey, you want to connect? I'm like, yes. I felt like someone in like first grade in kindergarten, like looking for a friend. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, thank you for reaching out to me. <laughs> yeah, but I I mean, I only had the courage to do that because recently a, a friend of mine, Freya, she's a web designer as well. She just emailed me one day. I was like, I love your newsletters, Ems. Um, do you want to be friends? And I was like, Oh, yes. Like, and she was such an inspiration to me. So for her to uh, kind of invite me into that, I was like, that's so beautiful. And a beautiful relationship kind of friendship has come from that. And so I do it to other people now. So do you want to be friends? And yeah. people are always so happy to say yes. So, yeah. Thank you Share for helping me. be more seen. <laughs> <laughs> No, you look at you. I'm so proud of you. It's been <laughs> we've both grown so much in the short yeah. time we've known each other as well. I think that's really beautiful. Yeah, I'm so grateful to be able to share this journey with you. Have someone to talk about these things. Likewise, it's so nice to have girls talk about things like like this. business life. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, part two or like next part coming soon for money mindset. Eventually, once I figure it out, we figure it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be a really fun conversation to have. Agree, be. agree, and I, it'll be fun to see what others think because mm. yeah, it's not talked about often. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. It's uh, been thank you so pleasure. much for joining me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Bye, Emily. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review on iTunes. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.